Hey everyone, and welcome to my review for House of the Dragon Season 2 Episode 4, The Red Dragon and the Gold. And what a spectacular battle that was. It didn't go exactly how I thought, but I am thoroughly satisfied with how it went down. For me, the episode wasn't perfect, but overall, it was another excellent addition to a great season. So like always, let's get into the positives, negatives, my top 5 moments, and a final score. Beginning with the positives, I was a bit shocked by the scene between Corlys, Rhaenys, and Alan of Hull. Very interesting to learn Rhaenys knew about her husband's other children. The books don't go into specifics, but according to Mushroom, Rhaenyra's jester, Adam and Alan's mother never named their father while Rhaenys was alive, and Corlys never acknowledged them, keeping them far from his fiery-tempered wife to prevent her from learning the truth. So it's fascinating to consider she might have known all along. To me, the show is portraying her character as less aggressive and warlike than the books, so in this case it does feel believable that she might know about them and be okay with it. Over in the capital, as much as I despise Larys Strong, I do very much enjoy seeing his political scheming, how he easily manipulates Alicent and the Greens as he wishes. I also thought it was interesting he mentioned securing the wealth of his house, as in the books it went differently, with Daemon securing the wealth of House Strong after conquering Harrenhal. On Dragonstone, I continue to enjoy Jacaris Valerion, who I gain more respect for after every episode. Spoiler alert for the rest of the series, but seeing Rhaenyra reveal the Song of Ice and Fire prophecy to her son was both heartwarming and tragic, as we know the fate that waits for them both by the end of this war. Now, moving on to the negatives, there are a few things that stood out to me, but none of them were all that bad, and there were still parts of these scenes I did enjoy. To start, I'll mention the opening scene, which to me, for the first time this season, didn't have much of an impact. In general this episode, I didn't enjoy Daemon Targaryen's scenes, but especially the dream and drug trip scenes. It was nice seeing the actress for young Rhaenyra back, and I understand they're trying to portray Daemon's inner turmoil, but it honestly just felt dull and uninteresting to me. I'm also disappointed the show is portraying Daemon as a fairly incompetent leader. While in the books, he remained in contact with Rhaenyra, properly strategized, and came off far more adept as a military commander. That being said, there were still things here I enjoyed, like the Alice River scene. She came off just as aggressively weird as I'd hoped for, and hearing her mention the bed made from weirwood trees was a good explanation for Daemon's dreams, so I really look forward to seeing more of her. Although Damon had a point, I didn't care for his treatment of potential allies. But still, it was nice seeing Oscar Tully and the mention of young Benjikot Blackwood, two boys who went on to play an important role in the war. But it does seem like they've eliminated Kermit Tully, who was the heir and future Lord of Riverrun, while Oscar was his younger brother. And honestly, I think they did it just because they don't like the name Kermit. Now let's move on to my top 5 moments, starting with number 5, which was Alicent Hightower proving to be a truly terrible mother. What a powerful but heartbreaking scene to see Aegon so readily dismissed and belittled by his own mother. Not that she was necessarily wrong, as Aegon is a bad leader and a terrible human being in general, but as we saw in the petition scene, it's not like there is no good inside him at all. So his mother should strive to bring that out of him as best as possible, but instead she just destroyed him in a way only a mother truly can, as the person who knows him better than anyone thinks he's worth less than nothing, leaving Aegon so utterly broken he sought to prove himself but ended up flying to his doom. At the number 4 spot, we go to Dragonstone and the Black Council scenes, where Jacaris finally called out his mother for her absent leadership. Again, I was disappointed with Rhaenyra's response as she so readily revealed the truth and failure of her irresponsible mission to the capital, which I imagine only furthers their lack of faith in her abilities. Corlys also made a big impression when he walked in and instantly silenced the bickering advisors. For the third best moment of the night, we return to the shaming of Aegon Targaryen with the Green Council scene, where Aemond embarrassed his brother by showing proper military leadership, strategy, courage, and a far greater command of the High Valyrian language. It was both funny and tragic seeing the council so uncomfortable as the obvious deficiencies of their king were on full display. This scene, coupled with Alicent's harsh words, completely sent Aegon over the edge, and it was all so captivating to watch. For the second best moment of the night, I've chosen the ruthless and heart-wrenching sacking of Duskendale, where the kingmaker Kristen Cole executed Lord Darklin, who I was impressed to see died with honor like a badass. Spoiler alert for the rest of the series, but his final words, yours will come in kind, felt impactful and comforting knowing Cole's ultimate fate, as he'll die as he lived, a failure without honor, and in the end Lord Darklin will be avenged. What a great scene with incredible acting from everyone. Kristen Cole is such a great villain and you can really see the bloodlust in his eyes as he wins the first battle, doing the only thing he's ever been good at. 
And finally, as I'm sure everyone can guess, for the best moment of the night, there is no choice aside from the battle at Rook's Rest. They absolutely nailed the first true battle scene between dragons. And while events didn't go exactly as portrayed in the books, overall they did an amazing job and really had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. In the books, after House Staunton sent a message to Dragonstone, we get two different versions of events. The first claims Rhaenyra would not risk her dragon rider sons, Jacaris and Joffrey, who both previously expressed desires to fight. And so Princess Rhaenys was sent on her dragon Melis, while another version of events claims that Rhaenyra was still grief-stricken by the loss of Lucerys and wasn't even involved in the War Council, leaving Corlys and Rhaenys in command. Either way, it was Rhaenys who engaged in the battle at Rook's Rest, wiping out about 800 soldiers before King Aegon and Prince Aemon flew in to join the battle. Badly outnumbered, Melis viciously bit Sunfire's neck, resulting in a chaotic melee between all three dragons that sent them crashing to the ground, leaving Rhaenys and Melis dead, while Aemon and Vagar survived to complete the conquest of Rook's Rest. In the show, events went a little differently, but were still expertly handled. Although I wasn't the biggest fan of the Black Council meeting before the war, as it felt odd they didn't even consider sending more than one dragon, especially since they pointed out they were being tested, which means the Greens would obviously be prepared for what might come, likely with Vagar hiding nearby. So for me, this scene could have been improved if Jacaris had insisted on going with the princess, only for the Queen to forbid it, leaving Rhaenys to choose whether she will support Jacaris to increase her odds of victory, or support Rhaenyra as a fellow mother and risk her own survival, at which point she would agree with the Queen and share a final moment of motherly connection before flying off to her death. But regardless, the battle that followed was absolutely spectacular, and really delivered on what I wanted from a dragon battle. Even the fighting on the ground was handled well, as I loved seeing House Staunton so ready to defend themselves and the Greens using troops they recruited in the Crownlands as the first wave sent against their enemies. In the books, the Targaryens are resistant to heat, but it seems a lot more pronounced in the show as Rhaenys especially seemed to survive several fire attacks without much issue, but in the moment, for me, it all served to make her feel even more badass as she took on two dragons at once. There was a moment in the battle, after Aegon was down, when Rhaenys could have retreated to Dragonstone, and even if they lost Rook's rest, bringing down Aegon would have been an enormous victory. This likely would have been the better option, as Maelys was far faster than Vagar and had Syrax, Vermax, and Moondancer to back her up on Dragonstone. But I can't deny a sense of pride as she courageously refused to retreat, doing her best to take out Aemon, which I personally interpreted as Rhaenys trying to make up for her failure to end the war before it began by killing the Greens during the coronation. This felt so powerful and epic, I absolutely love this battle. And that's without even mentioning the most shocking moment of all, which was Aemon purposely burning his brother and Sunfire, effectively eliminating the king so he could take power. This was a real turning point, taking him from a tragic character to an outright villain. Despite his lack of loyalty, it also felt like Aemon really demonstrated his abilities as a warrior and commander. I also loved the horror and shock on Cole's face when he realized the king was down, as he once again failed in his duty, both as Hand and Lord Commander of the Kingsguard. This entire battle was an amazing moment for this series as a whole, and really let the character Rhaenys go out in a way fitting for a Targaryen warrior princess. So that's my review for House of the Dragon Season 2 Episode 4, The Red Dragon and the Gold. A very strong episode this week that left me very happy and eager for more. Although I did feel some of the first half was slow, that was quickly overshadowed by their incredible portrayal of this first dragon battle. So I'm going to give this episode a high score of 9 out of 10, with the battle at Rook's Rest really elevating it to another level. But what did you all think? Did you enjoy the battle as much as I did? What did you think of Aemon's betrayal? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to come back for my next review along with the Dance of the Dragons themed videos released every Sunday. So that's it for now guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Ishmam Ahmed of Shamiriana, Sir Bob of the Buoy, Tim, and Torque Frostbite. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.